right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Tom Connolly, who is in Texas. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing great today, John. Thanks. Great to, have, great to be here. Yeah, and so, Tom, in over 30 years of U.S. Marine leadership, you've led organizations from 50 to 3,500 personnel with budgets up to 2.8 billion. And, I mean, your, your whole military career is so it's, uh, extremely, extremely impressive. It would probably take me the whole podcast to read all the things that you have done. <laughs> um, but welcome, because what we want to talk about today is that leadership is an apprentice vocation and why every leader needs a coach. Um, so, so Tom, let's just start at the beginning. Why do you why do you call it an apprentice vocation? Well, John, that's uh, it, it's a it's the perfect question for for the, for the topic because it, most people I didn't realize it until I was writing the book. Right, I was writing a book mm -hmm. for my daughter. I wanted to give her some some, uh, some guidance. Uh, she, she's a Marine captain now, but I, mm -hmm. I, she was graduating from the Naval Academy. I was like, you know, and I'm so I'm sitting down and I'm writing this and I, and I realize that we always talk about leadership by example. And we always talk about, uh, tenets of leadership and those things. But the fact of the matter is you can read every book in the world, but mm -hmm. if you don't have somebody who can show you the way, then you're not learning it. You're not, you're not getting the practical application and you're not seeing how it changes at each level and how you have to continue to grow and learn with it. And so I was writing the book and I was like, you know what? My dad used to say it all the time when I was a kid. My dad was in the, in the Navy and he used to say, you know, you spent 17 years as a seaman apprentice before mm -hmm. you ever went to the Naval Academy. Right. And, and it just, and it hit me and I was like, holy cow, um, you know, you live this, but then you don't realize how important it is that you have mentors and that you mm. continuously as a leader uh, are being apprentice, you're being an apprentice because every move is a new learning experience, right? So yeah. You know, as you move up the chain, as you move to different jobs, you have to have the humility of an apprentice. At the same time, you're somebody's master. Somebody yeah. works for you. Yeah, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting concept. And by the way, the book is called Becoming a Leader, a Roadmap for My Daughter and the, and the Aspiring Leader. Uh, but it is an interesting concept, that idea, because when people move into leadership positions, sometimes they think, okay, I've been entrusted with this, therefore, I now have to do everything. And to your point is, I don't think enough people go reach out and look for mentors or coaches to help them because they get this maybe a little bit skewed idea that because they've been put in a leadership position now, they have to do everything. They have to prove that they can do it. And, and asking for help is maybe showing that you're not qualified for the job. Yeah, I, you know, I agree. I couldn't agree with you more, okay? That's 100% right on. And especially for the young leader, you know, mm. I, I, I tell the story in my book, you know, you stand in front of your first group of people, you know, for me, my first platoon, and you've been training for it for four years, and you, you're standing, almost five at that point, and you're standing and you're looking at them and you're going, wow, I don't know as much as I thought I did. You know, wh wh where am I going to get the rest of this? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so you, if you're smart, you do what good leaders do, right? You, you've done some study, you do some, you know, take some action, you evaluate what your, what your results were, right? And then you refine that, you know, and it's a continuous cycle of, you know, of study, action, or reflection and refinement. And in, in doing that, um, you're, you have to, you, if you're going to do that, then you have to humble yourself to the idea that maybe even your privates know more than you do. Mm -hmm. um, and at times that's absolutely true. So at different times, maybe even during the day, you have to be the apprentice when somebody else and let somebody else be the master. Right. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, the young leaders, especially 
you know, especially guys, because you get promoted for your competence, right? Especially in yes. industry. If you're a great yes. salesman, you get promoted for being a great salesman, right? You can yes. sell a, a man a lawnmower in the desert, right? Mm -hmm. You can do that. And you get promoted and all of a sudden you have a whole sales team, right? Mm -hmm. And you're looking at that whole sales team and they're going, yesterday you were my equal. Today yeah. you're my boss. What, you know, what, what, you know, what blessing from on high did you get that all of a sudden made you brilliant, you know? Yeah. And, and so that's where, you know, you got to go, okay, who's, who's going to help me? Who, who's going to show me the way? Maybe it's your boss. Maybe it's somebody in a different organization. Maybe you need to go find a coach, you know? Yeah. Um, and, I think and we I would, all need coaches. Yeah, no, I would agree with the coaching. And just on your point about sales managers, yeah, it's very true. I mean, the, the tenure is uh, a year and a half roughly for, for a lot of them precisely because of what you're talking about. We, we have this thing uh, in, core, in business today, where you're right, we promote people for competence at a job and we put them into management or leadership positions, but we don't prepare them for those. We just say, well, you're really good at selling, so you'll be a great sales manager and it rarely ever works out. Um, so and I was going to make the comment about young people, you know, because I always say to my son, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not young enough to know everything. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But, yeah, but but on, on, coach, on coaching, I mean, why do you think it is that people don't invest as much time or energy in coaching or even value coaching the way they should? Because let's face it, most people have, have hobbies and pastimes and they invest a ton of money in coaching and practice for that, but nothing, don't invest in the thing that puts bread in your table. You know, that's a, that's, a, that's a real, that's a question I really haven't considered, but you're exactly right. You know, um, why don't they? Um, if it's coming out of their bottom line, you know, you don't look at it as a direct income producing, you know, uh, expenditure, right? So, so, so it, it falls down there with education and other things and buying books on, you know, mm -hmm. on whatever. And, and so, uh, they don't see it as as being as 10xing their their out their output right mm -hmm. um, because it has to filter through you to your people and uh, and so so they don't see that but what they have to understand is when you when you get a coach and they can help you to develop your culture then mm -hmm. you have a place a culture of performance where people want to be there and want to work and you don't have to do as much. Um, because if you aim in on that prime directive, right? That prime imperative mm -hmm. that I talk about in my book, which is everybody in your organization has value. As leaders, we tend not to think about ourselves that way. And we don't invest in ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we think about our people, we, you know, if, if you're being conscientious, um, but you don't think about what you're going to do and how you're going to improve, you know? So I, 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 there's probably a bazillion questions yeah. for that. Yeah. But it, yeah. So I think on that point is, uh, I think that part of it is, as I said, when people don't invest in themselves, when they don't get coaching, it's because they feel that, Oh, maybe it's showing that I'm not good enough or whatever, which is actually the opposite because it shows much greater confidence and self-awareness if you are willing to address your maybe uh, your own um, gaps or accentuate your strengths or, or whatever, but it, it comes from a place of, when it comes from a place of confidence, it's very different. And I think that's why people got to see this differently. It's not, it's not a weakness to get a coach. It's actually showing strength and confidence. Uh, I, you know, there's a reason I'm in the business, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I believe that, right? I, I know I had lots of coaches before the idea of coaching was cool, right? I mean, 30 mm -hmm. years ago, you didn't, you didn't hear about coaches. But right. I had, you know, tremendous number of uh, bosses that, uh, and coaches outside of my organization that, you know, that I could ask questions to and they could direct me in where I needed to go. And, uh, and so, you know, I, when, I, when I left the industry, when I left, you know, working for somebody, I said, you know, I want to be a consultant. And then I said, you know, I, it's not really consulting. It's, it's, I want to be a coach. I want to help people to find mm -hmm. their way, not my way. I want right. them to find their way. And, you, and it takes, takes a little coaching. I've coached a lot of things. And this is a, you know, this is a very dynamic environment to coach in. 
Yeah, and I think also that it helps people being held accountable because, uh, especially when you're in a leadership position, I mean, yes, you're accountable. You, you've always, everybody has a boss, yeah. right? And you're always accountable. However, you may not have as much accountability around you as you might when you were like um, earlier on in your career. So also the beauty of having a coach is you find somebody safe, external, who holds you accountable and nobody else has to know about it. And I think that's the beauty of it. <laughs> I, I would agree with you a hundred percent, you know, um, especially uh, when I talk to youngsters, I'm like, you know, find somebody that you can ask the questions you wouldn't ask your boss, you yeah. know? Um, and uh, but yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's the beauty of it. Um, somebody that will hold you accountable because we're all held accountable one way or another mm -hmm. better to be held accountable by someone who's not right in your paycheck, um, yeah. you know? Yeah, and as you mentioned earlier, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I wasn't in the military, but I mean, I can, I'm sure that um, the, uh, the rank and file are very good at spotting people who know what they're doing and people who don't know what they're doing. And it's the same in, in, in the corporate space too, eventually sure. they will. So you really do owe it to yourself if you're going to, going to have any chance of success is to, give yourself all the tools necessary because if you just kind of try and muddle through, you're going to get found out very quickly and it's probably not going to be pretty. Ab absolutely. I mean, that, that's, uh, that, that's always true in the military, but it's always true everywhere. People mm -hmm. know, and, but at the same time, you know, so they're holding you accountable for your own, you know, for your performance in front of them. At the same time, you know, that fear that uh, somebody's not going to follow you, they will follow you to hell and back if they know that you're honest and you're going to mm -hmm. bring them with them. You know, you're, you're bringing them along as well. As you learn, as you get better, they're following and, and they will, even if you make mistakes, as long mm -hmm. as you're honest and trustworthy. And yeah. that's where coaches can help you because they're the ultimate accountability, right? Your people are the ultimate accountability. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you work with someone, what are some of the first steps you help them with in order to get them to a, a point of where they're feeling, you know, where they can feel confident about, about developing their leadership and about, you know, being trustworthy and honest with the people that they're leading? Well, I, I'm, I always start with, you know, what do you believe in? What, mm -hmm. what is it you believe in? What are your, what are your highest values in life? Um, because if they don't understand that, then their self-awareness is, is seriously lacking. They need to figure out who they are. Um, if they know who they are, then let's say, okay, where is it you want to go? Um, do you know what, what you want? Let's talk about what you, who you are and where you think you're going. Um, because I mean, it's like any assessment in any organization, right? And you talk to people, you say, where are we now? And where mm. do we think we're going? Um, and, and so once you, once you can get the idea of these are my values, then it's about bringing your performance in alignment with those values. Right. So, um, so that's, I mean, that's where I start and, yeah. and there are a bazillion symptoms to that. What's, what's happening at work? Why do you think you're not getting, the, are you getting the results you want? Do you, do you know what results you want? Um, maybe if it's a brand new job, what do you anticipate? What kind of personalities are you dealing with? Who are your boss? Why do you think you're, you know, that, that, why are you afraid of that? Or why are you not afraid of that? Sometimes we just need to get out of our own way. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so that fundamentally, I start always at what are your values? What do you believe in? What's important to you? What's, you know, people want to find work-life balance and all kinds of things. And mm -hmm. my answer to that is there's really no balance. Um, <laughs> There, there really isn't. There isn't no balance. There is no balance. There is uh, the, the difference is putting the time where you yeah. think is most important. Mm -hmm. and, and so it, it's like uh, multitasking, right? I mean, mm -hmm. there is no such thing as multitasking, right? You no, focus no, no. on one thing for a period of time, mm -hmm. and you focus on something else for a period of time. You know, yeah. I, I tell the story in the, you know, in the book about, hey, you know, if you're a pitcher, how many pitchers do you know that are great home run hitters on the baseball team, right? Yeah. Um, they might have been when they were little, but they're not later because they focus only on pitching. So if you want to yeah. be great at something, then you have to be great at it. But then you have to know what the payoff is mm -hmm. um, and what you're willing to sacrifice for that. Um, and 
and I think that that's a key point here. Uh, I just went down some uh, no, that's that's a really key point here that I really want to emphasize is this idea about uh, because I believe that people don't generally like making choices because if I choose one thing, I by default I unchoose these other things, right? And we want to have all these options open all the time. But to your point is every time you choose if you choose something, you focus, you want to be good at it, you also have to understand the compromises that come with it and as you say if i'm going to do this then i can't focus on doing that as well and and i think there's something very liberating about that but i think that's what holds a lot of people back it's actually making a choice sticking with it and, and really focusing their energies on it oh you're exactly right uh, but that's why you understand what are your values what are your mm -hmm. highest values in life because if, you, if those are truly your highest values, then you're not going to be happy not doing them. And I was a world-class power lifter at one time, and I was a Marine, right? And I, and I was spending a lot of time in the gym trying to be, you know, stay a world-class power lifter. And I, I had to look at myself one day and I said, what do I get paid for? Do I get paid, mm -hmm. to, you know, do I want to be a world-class power lifter or do I want to be a world-class leader? Which is it? And, and I said, you know, I'm going to be a world-class leader. I'm going to do that. I'll keep lifting. I still lift. I still work out. Sure. I was in the gym today. But the point of the matter is that you make those choices and you make those choices in alignment with what your values are. If you do that, you'll be happy and, and, you'll, and you'll put your time there. Doesn't mean that somewhere down the road, you don't go, hey, okay, I'm done being that and I'm going to do something else. Yeah. It doesn't change yeah. your character. It doesn't change who you are. It may change what you do every day. Yeah, and I love that point too, because I do say to people sometimes, you know, when they're struggling with a choice or whatever, I say, you know, nothing is forever. Uh, you, you make the choice, you can always ch change something, change something later. But I just want to come back to that idea of values, because I really do think that if you just took 100 random people right now, I'm sure there's only a small percentage of them would be able to tell you what their values are straight off the bat, right? And I think that's the problem is that we don't spend enough time figuring out what our core values are, what we really want in our lives. And all that. We, tend, we just get into this rhythm, maybe doing what we think is expected of us, but without ever really questioning ourselves. Yeah, well, you know, that's true. Um, it's, it's absolutely true. Hey, look, I started this process. You know, I was already a Marine officer. I was already, I was actually in a sales job being an officer selection mm -hmm. officer in the Midwest and getting my tail kicked when I sat down on the floor and listened to a bunch of tapes one day. And I said, you know, I'm not living up to who I think I am. And, right. uh, and I need to do that. And I need to put my time and my effort, my passion into what I believe in into what my values are and i had to figure it out and and you're you're exactly right um you have to uh you know everybody's not going to do that but that's part of that commitment because you're mm -hmm. not going to lead you're not going to be a leader if you don't commit to being a leader why do sales managers go away after you know a year and a half because they're not committed to being mm -hmm. to taking on the leadership role yeah. they might be mm -hmm. great salesmen but they don't want that and, and you have to want this. You have to want to be a leader. Yeah. And then you have to figure out and, and bring your performance in line with that. You have to teach something every day and you have to learn something every day <laughs> at the very minimum. If you're not, then you're not leading. Yeah, and, and I just want to underline that point as well because as we mentioned earlier, unfortunately, success tends to be measured, especially in, in the corporate world or wherever it is by moving up okay mm -hmm. so getting promoted and that generally means managing people and but not everybody are managing or leading people but not everybody is is suited to that but that's what we have set up as you're, you're not successful if you're not like moving up and managing people but i think to your point is i wish more people would really kind of take a step back and ask themselves is that really what they want to do and as you say are they are they willing to put in the work and the commitment to be that as opposed to, okay, I'm just going to, I'm just going to move up. I'm going to be in charge of people, but yeah, I'll just wing it and see how it goes. It'd be much more honest if we actually said, no, you know, I don't think that's for me. Oh, I don't disagree with you at all. And, and, and it would be a lot less painful for those people. Um, mm. But at the same time, you know, the, uh, 
you can't you can't fix every uh, sure. every uh, hierarchical organization so that it you know doesn't work out that way. I, listen, everybody can be a leader if they want to be a leader and they're willing to put in the work. I don't believe that leaders are born; they're made. Yeah. Um, you have to lead within your capabilities. But those people that don't want to lead are going to be miserable trying to lead um, if they're not willing to put the work in. Um, and either they'll get beat up and decide they're going to put the work in or, um, or they'll go find something else to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's great to evaluate that. It's very hard to do. You know, my son's a, a sophomore at, at, in college and, you know, he thinks he wants to be a Marine officer. And I'm like, okay, um, let's see. You know, let, right. let's see. Uh, we, we don't know that, that that's going to work out. And even when you start that, you know, okay, you do it for a few years. And you, I really fit this or I don't really fit this. People have to experience different yeah. things to get there. And coaches are great for doing that, you know, yeah. but very few high school kids and college kids have coaches, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, they have all kinds of coaches. And the question is, are they listening? And that's the other piece. Yeah, and I think this brings us back to where we started uh, again. Is if you do if you do want to go into leadership, maybe what you want to do is get a coach before you go into leadership, right? As opposed to, and if you don't, um, maybe as soon as you move into leadership, you should get a coach immediately. But to your point, is it can be a very lonely place and a kind of a confusing place often, and you need someone external, non judgmental somebody who's going to keep you hold you accountable, but somebody who you can feel free to share your your feedback and be vulnerable with and all that kind of good stuff um because i think it's i think as you say there's nothing worse than if you're in a position that either you you don't really want or you're frankly just ill-equipped for right yeah I, I agree but you know whether you decide to do that whether you decide to do a coach or not i think we all ought to have three people in our lives right somebody yeah. that we're aspiring to be somebody that's our peer that can tell us when we're just falling off the when we're smoking dope right when we're not mm -hmm. we're not making good rational decisions and then somebody that we're always trying to lead that's because that person's holding us accountable too right mm -hmm. so if you always have those three people in your life that you trust that can tell you those things that you can share those things with whether they're a coach or not um then you know you're you're making use of all the different senses that you have and you're continually engaged in that you know study action reflection and refinement whether you want to be or not you're just improving yeah. as a human being and that's where and that's where your self-awareness will increase and i think self-awareness is the biggest obstacle to success personally lack of obviously uh and i think uh, going on a journey of of, of self-discovery and self-awareness is one of the most liberating things you can do a particularly easy thing uh and sometimes for some of us it, it may be a lifelong journey and it may not have yeah we may it may have taken it longer than one would have liked but i do think that this is a fantastic opportunity right now for people to take a little time out for some self-reflection, some self-awareness. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, you know, it, well, I can tell you, you know, whenever you face a challenge, mm -hmm. there's an opportunity to learn, right? Yeah. And there have been numerous challenges here. You know, heck, I just moved my whole, my, my whole operation and my family from Northern Virginia to uh, Waxahachie, Texas in the midst of a pandemic, for goodness sake. Yeah. It, there's a couple of challenges there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it is. It is. Uh, um, well, listen, uh, Tom, this has been fantastic. Um, love it. Love the, love the book. Uh, all of Tom's information is going to be below this interview. But please, before we go, tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Marine. I'm a father. I'm an author, uh, a leader, and, uh, you know, a Christian. And... Uh, and I uh, am a speaker, but I'm a coach within all those things. And I got there through 30 years uh, plus of leadership experience in the, in the military and in the defense industry. And my objective is to help people to become more productive and successful uh, personally, professionally, spiritually, and physically. Mm -hmm. That's where I go. Leaders and organizations can always improve their strategy their organizational dynamics and their leadership.
Yeah, that's fantastic. And I have to say, uh, living in, in uh, North County, San Diego, whenever I, I drive up towards Orange County or LA, going through Camp Pendleton or you know, going to the freeway through, I love seeing, love watching the Marines out, you know, when they're training and running around and racing around in tanks or left landing off helicopters and stuff. It's always great to watch. All right, well, listen, Tom, this has been fantastic. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.